So Tommy Pham slaps a Giants player over football. Gabe Kapler makes a political stance and the Rockies unveil the most hideous uniforms in baseball history. What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Before we get to the stories, please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Next, go over, smash the red button, go subscribe. That is the best way to show your support here on the channel. Then go over, ring the bell, get notified so you know when exactly I am coming out with great baseball content. And finally, if you want to get active, go down below in the comment section. I would love to hear your thoughts on the stories I'll be covering here today. So, Giants manager Gabe Kapler uh, decided to take a political stance uh, once again on Friday in the wake of the Texas elementary school shooting, and once again he did so during our national anthem. Now, according to the article, uh, the news weighed heavily on Kapler's mind, and for a moment, he considered kneeling during the national anthem or walking off the field to express his frustration with the lack of action from the country's political leaders to curb gun violence and prevent yet another mass shooting. Now, according to Kapler himself, he says, you know, my brain said drop to a knee, my body didn't listen. He goes on to say, I want to walk back inside, instead I froze, I felt like a coward, I didn't want to call attention to myself, I did not want to take away from the victims or their families. There was a baseball game, a rock band, the lights, pageantry, I knew that thousands of people were using this game to escape the horrors of the world for just a little bit. I knew thousands more would not understand the gesture and would take it as offense to the military, to the veterans, to themselves. However, Kapler did reiterate that, you know, he is not okay with the state of the country. He says, quote, I wish I hadn't let my discomfort compromise my integrity. I wish that I could have demonstrated uh, what I learned from my dad, that when you are dissatisfied with your country, you let it be known through protest. Uh, the home of the brave should encourage this, end quote. He also said, I do not plan coming out for the national anthem going forward until I feel better about the direction of the country. That will be the step, Kapler explained. He says, you know, I don't expect it to move the needle. It's just something I feel strongly enough to take that step. And now all I'm going to say on this is that I personally believe that I think there are better ways to protest and more appropriate times to do so. Perhaps, you know, maybe not show up during the first inning of the game or remove yourself from the managerial position for one full game if this, uh, you know, gun violence issue truly means more to him than baseball. But again, I support, you know, his right to do whatever he wants. I also think he could perhaps put his money where his mouth is and actually donate uh, to an organization that is actively seeking ways to eliminate the amount of guns that could be sold to individuals if that's something he is truly passionate about. And, you know, not just see him speak out against this issue because it's conveniently relevant and makes for good press. That's kind of how I feel about it right now with him. Again, I respect his right to do whatever the hell he wants. I don't care what he does. Do I agree with it? Not necessarily, but I respect his right to do so. And I want to make that extremely clear and concise. Again, that's what we got from Gabe Kapler. Now, the second thing on the list also involves the Jahantes and one of their star players, Jack Peterson. Now, yesterday, the Reds left fielder Tommy Pham and Giants left fielder Jack Peterson got into a altercation before the two teams faced off at GAB. This was on Friday night. Now, reportedly, did not have anything to do with baseball. It had to do with football. Okay, so according to the Athletics, Trent Rosecrans and Andrew Baggerly, the altercation stemmed from a fantasy football league disagreement. Now, Fam slapped Peterson before the two were separated by teammates. Uh, now, the Giants manager, Gabe Kapler, told reporters the team is investigating the situation and he won't comment on it any further until he has a clear understanding of what happened. Now, I also want to note real quick that Tommy Pham agreed not to play on Friday uh, in the wake of this slap 
but Jack Peterson was in the lineup for the Giants uh, and betted fourth on Friday night. So now I want to play you some video uh, from Jack Peterson. This was an interview he did with reporters, I believe, after the game, explaining the incident on the field pregame. Take a look. He slapped you. Yeah, that happened. That was just, uh, that was the only uh, physical part. Are you able to expand on maybe what preceded that? Why is that where he could do it from? Um, we were in a fantasy, fantasy league together. Uh, I put somebody, a player, on the injured reserve when they were listed as out and added another player. Uh, and then uh, there was a text message in the group saying that I was cheating uh, because I was stashing players on my bench. So you saw what Jack Peterson had to say right there. And in my opinion, you know, if this truly just had to do with a fantasy football league, then Tommy Pham is a definition of immature. However, I do believe there is something more behind the curtain. I'm thinking some smack talk was thrown from Jack's side to Pham that could be in play here and is what, you know, set off Pham and ultimately led him to slap Jack Peterson in the face. However, if there was any smack talk involved from either side, I still don't think it calls for any real smacking. But as of right now, it looks like Tommy Pham just cannot control himself and frankly does not deserve to step on a major league ball field. I mean, come on. You're slapping a guy over fantasy football. What are we, in 11th grade here? Jesus, I mean, you are grown ass men. It's one thing you get to fight during a game, that's one thing. But pre-game over fantasy football? Aren't you guys not supposed to be gambling anyways? So this is why gambling is bad in baseball. The final one, the Rockies unveiled their City Connect uniforms on Saturday, which they will be sporting a week from now. That is on June the 4th. And here is some info on the new unis. The article says the iconic Colorado license plate with its deep green mountains and clear and striking topography serve as inspiration for the jersey of the Rockies' new City Connect uniforms, which will debut, like I said, on Saturday, June the 4th, in a game against the Braves at Coors. Now, the Rockies' vice president of community and retail operations said, you know, we modeled the jerseys after the Rockies license plate because obviously wherever you're at in the U.S., if you see the plate, you know where it is, um, where it's from. That's Colorado. It represents the mountains, he says. And the front of the jersey is the front on the license plate. Even the numbers on our license plates are a little unique. The zeros are a different type. So are the ones and the nines, he says. Uh, so, uh, personally, I think the jerseys are hideous. Uh, it looks like a beer league softball uniform to me. It really does. It looks terrible. Now, again, I'm not from Colorado. Maybe I don't understand the whole culture up there when it comes to the skiing, uh, the color, the license plate thing. But I just think it's a very, very unappealing uniform from the naked eye. I just, I, I don't get it. I, I think they could have done better. I think the mountains could have been incorporated somehow. The green, I just don't get. I don't get the green. I'm sorry, I don't. I mean, the Rockies are purple for a reason. I think it's awful. I really do. And with that, that is all I got. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below your thoughts on the topics I covered here today. And as always, I'll catch you guys later.